you know, rice, meat, vegetables, something widely enjoyed by just about everybody in the world. And this, this is basically the pinnacle of all those things in one. Hang on one second, quick plug. In one week, the cookbook launches and we're hosting a special Discord Q&A. It's one of the few places that we do this. As a matter of fact, one of the only places we do this. So if you're not already a part of it, go into the description, click the link, join the community, it's free. It's literally just a way for us to all connect and hang out. Click the link in the description, join if you haven't already. Papa Keys, and uh, moving on to the next thing, all right. Okay, so today we're making bibimbap. Is that right? Pretty good? Yeah? Is it bibimbap or bibimbap? This is at the how-to pronunciation guide, all right? I cook food. Calm down! But also let me know in the comments. What do you think, huh? I'm not picking, you pick one. This dish is basic and yet complex at the same time. It consists of a multitude of accoutrements, each individual piece being cared for, loved on, as it deserves, and then assembled beautifully atop rice, and finally mixed together with a fried egg, where the yolk creates another sauce with the rest of the sauce, all the vegetables and meat, or if you wanna do tofu, do tofu, it's up to you. But the beautiful thing about this dish is that anyone can enjoy it how they want. So with all that said, let's make this, shall we? Right, if you've never had bibimbap, then sit your butt down and listen up. There are a lot of components here, and do yourself a favor and don't skimp on any of them. That's what makes bibimbap beautiful. It's the variety of flavors and textures that make it so special. Okay, oh yes, one of our best friends, rice. So beautiful when it's cooked properly. For this recipe, you'll need two cups of uncooked medium or short grain rice. Here, I opted for short grain tamaki gold. You should know the drill by now. Wash your gat dang rice. You put the rice in a sieve, fill the bowl up with water, agitate, pour it out, and repeat one more time. How many times have I said this now, guys? At this point, there shouldn't be a single one of you that's not washing your rice. If you're using a proper rice cooker, then you'll place it in that with equal parts water. So two cups or 480 milliliters of water, close it and turn it on and uh, yeah. Next, we have our bibimbap sauce. This is essential. In a medium-sized bowl, add three tablespoons of rice vinegar, two and a half tablespoons of mirin, two teaspoons of dark soy sauce, one tablespoon of honey, five tablespoons of gochujang, two teaspoons of toasted sesame oil, two cloves of garlic that have been grated, and two teaspoons of grated ginger. Then give it a classic whiskey business. Until completely combined and looking luscious like this. Now, let's talk about my meat, or your meat. First, you'll need one pound of ribeye. Cut that into quarter inch slices, or as thin as you can get it. Then separately, you'll need half a pound of boneless short rib that you'll also get sliced equally as thin. Toss that into a medium bowl, and then to that, you're gonna add four cloves of garlic finely chopped, a quarter cup of sweet soy sauce, one tablespoon of dark soy sauce, one tablespoon of rice vinegar, two teaspoons of sesame oil, one tablespoon of honey. Then just toss that together until everything is completely and evenly coated. Cover that and marinate in the fridge for at least 20 minutes, but ideally overnight. Now, while it's marinating, we can focus on the rest of our goods. Speaking of marination, let's talk mushrooms. A lot of people like to just cook their mushrooms like normal or use dried mushrooms, but this, of course, being a grand culinary poppy recipe, then we have to take it further. First, make the marinade by getting a sauce pot that's way too large, which means it should have been more of a medium-ish sized one. Then add half a cup of white distilled vinegar, half a cup of mirin, half a cup of soy sauce, two bay leaves, five cloves of garlic, lightly crushed but left whole, one shallot, halved or quartered, place it on the stove, and begin heating until just steamy hot, but don't boil it. Separately, I've got myself about one pound of baby king oyster mushrooms. Slice those bad boys into quarter inch planks and toss them in oil that's around 350 degrees Fahrenheit and let them fry, stirring them around occasionally until they get to a rich, deep golden brown. You intentionally want to dry them out a bit. It's okay that they're dry. That's kind of the point. Then place your extra quiz mushrooms directly in your hot marinade, then pour all that into a container and let it sit until cooled completely, and that's your mushroom. Look, the longer these sit, the better they taste. So store this in the fridge for honestly quite a while, but I doubt they'll last long because they're so yummy. Okay, we're making good headway here. Let's move on to our cucumber. Get one seedless English cucumber, cut it into half inch coins. Now while this is optional, and you know how I feel about optional extra stuff, I definitely think it's worth it. So simply score both sides of each coin in a crosshatch pattern, obviously don't cut all the way through, and then season them lightly with salt and let them cure at room temp for 15 minutes. For one, this will make sure that salt gets penetrated all the way to the center and it gets rid of excess water. Now, you should see that they have released that water, so drain that, give them a light rinse. Now to those cukes, you'll add two tablespoons of spicy chili crisp, lemon juice to taste, and two cloves of garlic grated fresh. Now give that a nice little stir until totally coated and combined, and those are some of the most addicting cucumbers of your life. Also at this point, Point, you can realize that you should have cut these into quarters, but it's fine, coins are okay too. Next up, the carrot component, one of my favorites. In a medium-sized bowl, add one tablespoon of ginger, grated, mmm, fresh 
Gingy. Three cloves of grated garlic, one tablespoon of fish sauce, one tablespoon of gochugaru. Stir that together until combined and paste-like. Then snag yourself one and a half pounds of oddly girthy carrots. Peel them and julienne them beautifully. Toss them in the paste, and you essentially have a fresh carrot kimchi. Next, garlicky spinach. In a large pan, add a light drizzle of toasted sesame oil. Heat over medium heat. Add one bunch of fresh spinach. Season to taste with salt, and let that cook, stirring often until completely wilted, but still a nice vibrant green. Cut the heat. Add three cloves of very finely chopped garlic, and place it in a bowl to the side. That's it. See. There's a lot of components, but many just take a couple of minutes. Now, despite the fact that I hate these in most scenarios, we now have bean sprouts. Also, what an awful name, by the way. Bean sprouts. Anyway, get a medium-sized pot of water boiling. Add two cups of bean sprouts in batches. Boil for 30 seconds. Then immediately toss in ice water until chilled to stop the cooking process. Remove and drain on a paper towel. Then repeat this blanching process for the rest of your bean sprouts. Now, in a separate small saucepan, add three tablespoons of vegetable oil and three cloves of thinly sliced garlic. Bring that up over medium heat while continuously stirring. Now, first, the garlic will start to bubble, then basically it'll start frying. Let it fry, stirring off the until it reaches a golden brown toasted color. And I know you know that smells. Boys! Now cut off the heat, add your blanched bean sprouts, toss to coat, then toss with two teaspoons of fish sauce, and that's your toasty blanched bean sprouts. Okay, we have the majority of our components except for our steak. So crack open a cold one with boys and pop open that grill. Now, a normal grill is fine, but if you take this real serious partner, then I would suggest using a Conroe grill. You know, the kind grilled over hot bean chotan. But hey, do your thing. Pick whatever you like. So get that bad boy loaded up with white hot bean chotan put on your grates now once that is screaming hot i mean I, this thing needs to be hot 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 oh my god Grill your beef in batches, and I like to grill my pieces for about 30 seconds to a minute on very, very high heat to pick up color without losing too much juice. Be careful to avoid cooking this stuff for too long, otherwise it'll turn dry and leathery, and you might as well just go to a boot store at that point. And once all of your beef is beautifully cooked, grilled to smoky deliciousness, we officially have everything we need to assemble. I mean, look at this nice spread. Just just wanna kiss it. Now, for assembly, get a shallow bowl, and as obvious as you might have guessed, lay down a generous layer of your steamed rice. I like to flatten it so it's nice and even, sort of like a moon like mountainous terrain. Now add your mushrooms along with some of its lovely marinade, gently drizzled on top, then your spinach, then some of your bean sprouts, carrots looking lovely, cucumbers glistening in all their glory, and then a big old chonky stack of your fatty, beautifully smoky grilled beef. <laughs> My lord, that meat about to make me act up. Now wait a minute, what could we be missing, right? Something doesn't look right. Ah yes, the piece de resistance of a bibimbap. A nice fried egg right in the center, which literally is just fried egg with salt, nothing too crazy. But here's a little trick for you. When you're frying your egg and you crack it in the hot pan, to quickly cook the whites on top of the egg, once the bottom of the egg is set, gently baste the top of the egg with hot oil until it's puffed and cooked to your liking. But leave that yolk runny if you're real. Wow, here we are. It's time to put this in my mouth on camera for the world to see and give you my verdict. On this here lovely bowl. All right, this is already pre-mixed. It's lost its beauty, okay? But it hasn't lost its luster. This has history. Do I know all about it? No, but I do know how to make it, so here we are. Already mixed together, it's rice. It's like everything you want. Where do I begin? It's busting. But not for any ordinary way to bust. What I'm trying to say is there's a lot of layers to what makes this beautiful and amazing. For those who know bibimbap, you already know what makes this special, but it's every varying texture. Spicy, sweet, acidic, salty, beefy, or any meat that you happen to put in it. Who knows, maybe you're a vegan and you put tofu in it. That's fine. That's fine. <coughs> So with all the different layers of richness, the fattiness from the beef, you've got this rich fish sauce, salty cucumber with lots of umami and MSG, because there is MSG in the spicy chili crisp. That's why I like it. The richness gets cut by the freshness of the carrot, the fresh crunch of the bean sprout. And I hate bean sprouts. I hate them. There's only two contexts in which I like them, in this and in <laughs> Pad Thai. But my favorite thing about this entire bowl, and I could honestly just have this rice with egg and the marinated mushroom. That is key. If you're gonna make anything out of this recipe, make the marinated mushroom. Or maybe you're just watching for fun. And if you're watching for fun, thank you. If you're making something, also thank you. So with all that said, uh, we're just gonna go to B-roll. You wanna know what else is full of multiple components that are specifically made to go into your mouth? B-roll. <laughs> Oh my god.
guys, and that is it. So we made our bibimbap. It came out beautifully. It's one of those dishes that I think looks beautiful just about any way you choose to do it. That egg in the center surrounded by different colors and different vegetables. And this is a beautiful thing. How do you not want that like every day? The thing that's cool is if you make a big batch of each individual component, you just leave that in the fridge, whip up some steamed rice, and then top it up the same way every time. It's a beautiful meal that you easily stir together and eat. It can be easy if you prep. I don't really talk about meal prep that much on here because it's kind of an annoying process and I don't really like it. So that, yeah, that's how I feel about it. So anyway, with all that said, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe. I'm not really enunciating properly right now, but uh, subscribe. Okay, thank you. Goodbye.